So today I want to talk to you about some shielded metal arc electrodes. And there's a lot of different kinds, but we basically use two different ones here at BTC. We use 6010 and 7018. Now, again, there's a lot of different kinds. There's 6011 and 7024s and just a whole pile of different stick electrodes. But the most commonly used ones in industry are 6010 and 7018. So this is a 6010 electrode. You can see right on the rod, it says 6010. And that is the designation for tensile strength, welding position, and special characteristics of the rod. This is an eighth inch electrode. And the thing to know about the difference between all of these regular mild steel electrodes is the biggest difference with all these electrodes is not the wire, the core wire, it's the flux. Now we know, as opposed to gas metal arc welding, we don't use a cover gas to protect the weld. It's the flux that protects the weld. But what you might not know is it's actually both. So as the flux is burning, it's creating a gas that protects the weld, and then the flux covers the weld to protect it from the atmosphere as it cools. 6010 is a very unique electrode. It is what we call a fast freeze rod. So the flux on this rod is cellulose based. It's paper. It's kind of like a paper flux. Opposed to some of the other electrodes like a 7018, it's a very light flaky flux. It comes off real easy. But what this does is allows this electrode, it allows us to use a whipping technique. We whip this electrode. So, and I'll talk more about this in a second, but it's literally whipping this electrode back and forth. And when you whip this electrode, what that does is pulls heat out of the puddle and it allows the puddle to solidify. Then you come back to the puddle, remelt it, and you're basically whipping and pausing all the way across. Now we know when, when cellulose burns, it creates CO2 gas. And CO2 is one of the gases that we use to weld. CO2 creates deep penetration, and that is what these rods are designed for. Two things. They are special for two reasons. Number one, they're a fast freeze rod, which allows us to whip off the puddle, come back to the puddle and pick it up without slag entrapment, and number two, it creates CO2, so it is a deep penetration rod. It penetrates much deeper than the other rods. 6010 is a great all-around general rod for having around your house, farm use, whatever, but they also do the root passes in structural steel. They do the root passes in pipe. They do all of that with 6010. When we're talking open root welds, where it's two pieces put together and there's nothing in the middle, the root is always done with 6010. Very rarely will you see a 7018 root. Not that you can't and not that they don't, but it's very rare. We use 6010 because we have the ability to whip off that puddle and control the temperature of the puddle, plus it's deep penetration. So, when you get in your booth and you start with this 6010. The task is this. There's two ways to strike an arc. You can either do what they call a peck method where we come down and go boom. As soon as the metal hits, we pull it back and the arc ignites. Or we just scratch the thing and lift it open and the arc will ignite. The technique used with this rod, which is different, is we never just simply drag this rod. If you do, you'll end up with a deep penetrating weld, but you'll also end up with severe undercut on both sides of the weld. So what we use is a whip and pause. We pull off and back and pause. Pull off, back and pause. We whip it off and we pause. When we pull off, it digs into the base metal, creates penetration, and when we come back and pause, it fills it up. So basically, it's kind of like an inchworm Fill, penetrate, fill, penetrate, fill, penetrate, all the way across the weld. It's giving you the penetration 
and then it's coming back and filling this thing up. With the whip technique, one thing you want to be very careful of is we know stick welding as the arc length extends, as the arc length extends, the voltage goes up. So what we want to make sure is when we're whipping this thing forward, we're not twisting our rod and pulling it out because if that arc length gets that long, it's going to make a mess. We want to keep this thing nice and tight, straight forward and back. Boom, 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 all the way across your plates. The first weld you're going to do is your pad of beads where you're just making straight beads on flat plate and then you're going to overlap them 50 percent. Somewhat of a boring task but trust me the better you get that pad of beads the smoother you make this 6010 the more consistent you can get it in width and height the easier all of the rest of your welds are going to be. That pad of beads is the first step of learning this rod. Once you get to your fillet welds, your lap joints, and your T-joints, they'll go much faster and much easier if you take your time on that pad of beads and really learn this whipping technique that's used particularly with 6010. We simply cannot use that technique with a 7018 because the difference in the flux. The 7018 has a big heavy flux. This is a light flaky flux. So again, 6010 has its own special characteristics, it has its own special techniques. Get in the booth, grab a big pile of it, and burn them up. By the time you go through a plate or two, 50% overlap on those weld beads. Once you get to your other welds, you will already have this stuff mastered.